there, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Weekly Roundup. This week, we're covering the impact of data science in cargo shipping and farming, as well as Google's answer to DALI 2. So stay tuned to stay in the loop and let us know in the comments what your favorite news story of the week is. Our first story this week covers the world's first autonomous cargo ship completing a 790 kilometer voyage. The 750 gross ton vessel Suzaka traveled almost 500 miles in the congested waters of Tokyo Bay without needing human intervention for 99% of the trip. Orca AI and NYK Group, the companies behind the voyage, have shared that their algorithms are powered by AI and deep learning, and use data collected from the Suzuka for over a year prior to the voyage. These algorithms enable the ship to perform 107 collision avoidance maneuvers completely on its own, avoiding more than 500 other vessels in the crowded bay. While autonomous cargo ships have previously been commissioned and have successfully performed trips of up to 14 kilometers, this is the first example of an existing ship being retrofitted with AI-powered systems. The distance traveled and the number of collisions avoided by the Suzuka is truly remarkable. And in the words of Dr. Hideyuki Ando from NYK Group, the successful delivery of the entire project, thousands of kilometers away from Japan, and with complex hardware and software being shipped and remotely updated regularly, is a prime example of the potential technology has to transform the industry. Hopefully, autonomous ships will make shipping easier and safer, helping to prevent blockages like ever given in the Suez Canal, and reducing the mental load of navigating waters as busy as Tokyo Bay. Moving on to our next story, John Deere is announcing the acquisition of the state-of-the-art computer vision technology from AI startup Light. This acquisition will not only accelerate the development and deployment of the company's AI tech, but it'll also allow farming equipment to literally move faster, safely, without human intervention. Light's algorithms allow for the use of existing camera technology that's already widely used by farming vehicle manufacturers. This will help tackle the persistent issue of how to employ computer vision on a farm vehicle bouncing around on uneven terrain. The computer vision tech being employed is similar to the approach of Tesla's autonomous cars, but farm vehicles don't need to have expensive LiDAR systems because they're built for a different purpose. Despite the perception that autonomous farming technology will put people out of jobs, there's actually a large labor shortage in the agricultural sector. This labor shortage is one of the drivers of price increases throughout the food supply, and John Deere hopes that autonomous farm vehicles will be able to step in to fill the gap. In our next story, AI might be able to help curb gun violence by making security checkpoints less intrusive and easier to install. Evolve, the company behind the technology, says that their technology is aimed at spaces where a full-on airport-style security system would be overbearing, but that still need to be monitored for possible shooters. Evolve machines use active sensing to create images, a light emission technique that also underpins radar and lidar. It then applies AI to examine the created images. Data scientists at Evolve have created visual blueprints of weapons and trained the AI to compare them to the scanner images. The hope is that this system will also help to reduce guard fatigue for the humans keeping watch over spaces. When a system identifies a threat, a guard can see an orange box drawn around the object on a handheld tablet and can then step in to investigate further. This developing application of AI has sparked much conversation around its use, with some objecting to its potential for invading privacy. On the other hand, some objections are arising from the fact that the system sometimes misidentifies benign objects like Chromebooks as weapons. In spite of the possibility of false positives, however, the system appears to be quite good at detecting actual weapons. When the system was installed at an Atlanta area mall, it caught 57 guns in the first four hours of its operation. What are your thoughts on AI monitoring public spaces? Let us know in the comments. In our final story this week, Google has joined the Image Creation Club and has announced their own version of OpenAI's DALI 2. The system is called Imagine, and is built on the same diffusion principles as DALI 2, using large transformer language models to create photorealistic imagery from written prompts. While the most striking feature of Imagine is its photorealism, measurements have shown that Imagine is also particularly good at spatial relations, long-form text, rare words, and challenging problems. For example, when prompted to create a panda making latte art, three quarters of the Imagine results had the panda making the latte, while all of the DALI 2 images had the panda as the latte art. Unlike OpenAI, who is currently providing select access to DALI 2 via a private beta, as of today, Google has decided not to release Imagine to the public, citing the same algorithmic bias that plagues most image-trained models. Google has acknowledged that the datasets used to train the model contain harmful and biased imagery, saying in their release, while this approach has enabled rapid algorithmic advances in recent years, 
Datasets of this nature often reflect social stereotypes, oppressive viewpoints, and derogatory or otherwise harmful associations to marginalized identity groups. In contrast, OpenAI has taken some steps to curate the datasets used to train DALI 2, and is closely working with the private beta testers to release DALI 2 responsibly. The ethical challenges faced by the AI community are complex and ongoing. Nonetheless, we appear to be moving into an age of images created by AI, and are hopeful that the impact will be a net positive. That's the end of another roundup. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to give us a shout out in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. As always, make sure you're subscribed to receive weekly updates on the latest and greatest in data science. See you next week.